live from your home of complaints about cheap technology. You're listening to Techies Talking Tech Tonight, colloquially known as T4. It is March the 2nd, 2015, and I am your host, Trey Comstock, joined as ever by executive editor, Jimmy Winsbay. Hello, Internet. Pardon me while I rock out. Hello, Jim. This is, after all, the more hard rock podcast. I'm also going to reset my white balance. I don't know what the deal is going on here. Yeah. There you, and there you go. Up oh, and and there you go. There it this is. is. All great radio. Um, absolutely fantastic. I, I I'd taken on this great sepia tone. Yeah. No, it was real yellow. It was it was I, almost as if your camera was applying an Instagram filter. So here's a question: Was it was it blue or black or white? Oh and gold? God. The, okay. First of all, the dress is blue and black. I mean, objectively. And so Sydney and I got, and this is not the topic for today's show, but Sydney and I got into this tremendous this, argument. This is like, you know, breaking tech. Well, it's not really breaking anymore, but, you know, this is this is tech culture right here. Yeah, it's certainly internet culture, which, you know, we're kind of involved in. And so Sydney was like, no, it's, it's white and gold. It's white and gold. And so I did what other news outlets did. I just didn't publish my results. I loaded it in Photoshop. It was like eyedropper tool. This is blue. See where it parts on the spectrum. This is black. I can see where you get the gold. It's skewing towards yellow because of the lighting. But objectively, this is blue and black. But then I had a really scary moment. So we 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 did a show right after we discovered the blue black thing, right? Yeah, last week's show got delayed because of the blue black thing. Right, and it did because I had to sit down and show Sydney on the Mac Pro, MacBook Pro exactly what this was. So after we finished the show and I had finished editing, and usually I, I sit in the studio and kind of watch an internet video before I go to bed after these shows, and I happened to glance at my Twitter feed and I was like, oh, someone adjusted the colors so that it's white and gold. Then I clicked on the original image on my desktop. I saw white and gold. There was <laughs> a brief time before I went to bed that night where I could not see the blue and black. Now I'm back to seeing the actual colors. But there was many hours where I was questioning my very sanity because I saw the white and gold. See, okay, so that's the interesting thing because I could never see the white and gold. I looked at it a number of times in a number of different lighting conditions, and um, no, it, I, I couldn't see it. In all my playing in Photoshop, I couldn't make myself – I mean, I was sitting there trying to make myself see it. And I don't know what did it. Maybe something about just staring at all of these different screens for the amount of time that I, st- you know, I have three, four screens in front of me right now. Um, and so maybe something about staring at all of these screens, for the amount of time I do to do a TLCP um, is what did it. Cause you know, now, you know, it's sitting here on my desktop. And so periodically I do a sanity check where I just see, no, I see, uh, I see blue and black. Um, but yeah, you know, since periodically I'll look at it now just to see if see if my vision has shifted again. But I saw it very brief. I was like, "Oh God, what hath God wrought?" Yeah, um, one of the people I know um, described seeing it change from white and gold to blue and black after having known it was blue and black, and going, "Oh my God!" <laughs> yeah, no, it really. You know, turns out perception uh, is. Is not more, necessarily reality. It's not necessarily reality. Or it is reality, and that's the scarier part, right? It is your reality. Your brain... That is true. Yeah, no, that, this, that is the terrifying thing. This experiment, Mike Elgin on Tech News Today brought up this experiment where they showed half of... So it showed one eye, a ban- half of an apple, and the other eye, half of another fruit, maybe a banana. And that your mind fills in the rest of the fruit you don't see. Even though it never saw the fruit. Like, think about that. It, your brain. It really is, you know, your eyes are just dumb sensors. Taking in and converting light waves to brain waves. That's all it is. It's just a converter. And the brain does the processing. And that's where it all goes wrong. Because objectively... <laughs> That dress is blue and black. But even I, at one point, I'm only at one point, um, I'm back to normal now. Uh, but I saw a, a white and gold, and I blew my ever-loving mind. 
And it's one of those where I get to hear the tech press talk about the same things I hear my theology colleagues talk about. It's like, oh, it's about matter of perception and, like, how you see things. You see the world different. It's like, wow. It's like you guys discovered postmodernism for the first time. I'm so <laughs> happy for you. <laughs> a lot of the tech press does still just live in postmodernism. That's the no, thing they you're... live in modernism. The tech is all grounded in modernism of this idea that there's such thing as progress and there's an objective reality, and you know, except we're... for Donald Bell, right? Amish. Well, and, and Donald Bell, I think, used to report on MP3 players, and so he's seen an industry die. He's seen <laughs> something die. He right? understands how this happens, and then and then it just people yeah. who covered Apple in the '90s also, I think, understand what postmodernism is. Are we talking about Molly Wood now? Yeah, so yes, she did cover Apple in the '90s, right? It's not so. One of the tenets of postmodernism is it's not an endless march of progress, right? It's just changing times and also postmodernism is grounded in this idea of like everyone has a different perspective and that's valuable so it's it's the gamergate problem right so right. gamergate is locked in this world where there oh is this a good game i don't know do you think it's a good game i think it's a bad game do you think it's a good game let's talk about our differing perspectives and recognize that they are equally valued and making sure that you get different voices at the table so like trans asian women will have a different perspective than i do and that's interesting and we can talk about this um rather than saying you're wrong i simply say you have a different perspective than i do let's talk about that that's postmodernism, <laughs> and so that's what's <laughs> happening with this dress postmodernism is breaking out in the tech press and it's fascinating it's just like oh yeah what do you what do you see it's like god i'm i'm th- i do these things partly to escape my world of theology and academia. See, Why is it chasing me? But I, I will make the argument that I, th- I think that the tech journalists that I personally find the most value in are the ones that that take that kind of an analysis um, on with different things. They look at, at something and they don't assume that because it's the new thing, it's a better thing. They, they look at it and they go... Well, yeah, but are we really are we really better off now because of your thing? Right. Probably not. Are you better off now because of your thing? Probably not. So why? Yeah. Why? Well, we need to spend more as an industry. I think we need to spend more time asking those like really deep why questions. And I <laughs> have gotten to that point with iPads, right? I go. So I'll report on the iPad, the new iPad Air, and then you'll notice my conclusion is yes, that's all very nice. But who who is this device for? Because the people you use to image this device are really using MacBook Pros and Mac Pros and Workstation Dells, right? The real hardcore or Wacom tablets or DSLRs or whatever. I mean, they're using the real tool because I am that person, right? Like I am the person being you. Oh, the indie film, indie oh, filmmaker yeah. making the meaningful documentary. I didn't shoot it on a damn iPad. I had an iPad. <laughs> No, no, you're trying to elicit the, the visions of those people um, for people that are not those people. Right. I mean, absolutely. But when you're I've like always... the, the indie filmmaker because you have an iPad. Yes, but I've always appreciated the Macintosh because when I see the Macintosh ads, I go, yeah, I know all of these people and they use Macintoshes. Right. Or when Canon, even when they're doing it for their consumer DSLR line, it doesn't bother me because I used to do that kind of work on a consumer DSLR. There you have some real power. You really could do some of those things they're talking about on a consumer DSLR with some decent class because those are okay sensors. I mean, really. Well, and and in all fairness to, to Canon, they're usually showing a Rebel body with a high quality lens on it. Right. You can. And absolutely they're saying do you that. can take these pictures, and guess what? All of the pictures that they show you all came off of that camera. Or they're, or it's, or they're validated truth in advertising. I mean, again, uh, those kind of things don't... When you're trying to associate brands that are actually used by creatives to sell it to consumers, it doesn't really bother me. Because I look at most of those things and go, yeah, I use some version of that, right? I use a DSLR. I use a 7D rather than a Rebel. But I used to use a Rebel, and I did some great work with a Rebel. Some of my portfolio, a portfolio shot I'm looking at right now was shot with a Rebel XT. 
And another portfolio shot that just flashed up my screen. I shot with a Rebel XT. Um, you know, I edited my first document, my first full length documentary on a MacBook, a black MacBook without a discrete graphics card. Now this was an SD rather than HD. And it was when I made the HD switch that I had to move to the MacBook Pro line. Um, but so when you pitch me a consumer Macintosh or a consumer DSLR and say creatives use it, fine, absolutely. Yes, they do. Or certainly that's how they start. They're not using iPads. <laughs> they're, just, they're just not. That's a toy with too good a processor. They almost need to merge the iPad line with the MacBook Air line and get it done with. So then you can really do some work. But you can't do a whole... Unless you're like a professional Instagrammer, you're not doing real... Oh, God, help us. But they, they exist. I, don't, I saw an interview with one. So are they professional Instagrammers or are they professional photographers that use Instagram? No, 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 no. Is, the, is that a distinction without a difference? No, it is. There's a difference. They... They are mostly taking their photos of themselves. They're usually well-constructed photos. They will often have a professional photographer associated with them. Okay, they I need to look this up. built their brand, just like the YouTubers, on Instagram of taking food photos of the food they eat. Or fashion, not so selfies. Fashion photos of themselves. Or taking, you know, relatively well-crafted Instagram photos, posting them to Instagram, getting a lot of shares. There are professional Snapchatters. Oh my gosh. There are people who make their living on Snapchat. Instagram, who actually has a decent ad revenue model, it's Facebook after all, so they get like paid to wear clothes or paid for product placement or all of yeah, these kind of sense. things. And they make more money than I do on Instagram. They're being prof- I mean, it's, it's modeling. They're being professionally good-looking and professionally popular. It's Kardashians. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking and at... And actually, they're... it's better than the Kardashians because there's at least some indie cred to this, right? You just started out as a nothing... It's like Bieber. It's the only positive side of Bieber is he started as a nobody on YouTube. It stops being and positive at a point. And was discovered by Usher. But at, up until just Usher. after being discovered by Usher and transforming into a tremendous douchebag, Bieber was a feel-good story. <laughs> was a feel-good story. I now don't feel good for Bieber. I feel sad for Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> and I do. I feel sad for Bieber. Do you feel sad for Bieber on Instagram? I, I, not on Instagram, but were I on Instagram, I would feel sad for... He has an Instagram, I assume. I assume. He's a celebrity i'm sure he has a tech presence like instagram probably as a publicist he probably does no but i mean we're i'm looking at um i I just googled professional instagram and uh on bing because i'm using my windows 10 technical preview and i feel like it's only only appropriate to use the uh built-in search engine and uh um yeah everything else and um i pulled up a huffpo article uh, from five hours ago of Instagram, how it's changing the world of photography. <laughs> I'm like, I, great. Yep. Mm-hmm. No, it's a so, thing. So I'm going to read this when we're done. Um, because yep. that's terrifying. So something else that this was not actually, I don't know how so, we yeah, got down. This none of, level. none of this was the topic. <laughs> right. We got 14 minutes of not the topic. This is good. We're on a roll tonight. I feel like, you know, we talked about postmodernism and Bieber. <laughs> we really elevated the tech conversation. It's time for us to use a lot of profanity and talk like jerks. So I'm going to talk like a jerk. I am really concerned about the state of the of the desktop PC market. Oh, yeah. So I've had two recent experiences. I've had been rebuilding a lot of desktops, um, three of them, actually, over the past two weeks, which for me... In the course of a two-week period, to rebuild three desktops is a lot. Um, And I realized two things. One, they're just as hard as they always were. (laughs) Well, they stopped innovating that years ago. Two, they're not as good as they used to be. And so, 
my upgrade complaint is always the same thing, right? I was trying to migrate a PC from Windows 7 to Windows 8. I would run the Windows 8 upgrade client. It would say, you need to upgrade your UFEI to errata 2B. And I'm like, here we go. <laughs> It's even, on. It's on. We are we are in the real stuff now. <laughs> and so, like, I upgraded my BIOS. I upgrade like I upgraded my BIOS firmware, and then that didn't get rid of this error message. And then I was like trying to find different upgrade managers on the HP website. And then finally I looked up, okay, is this really a thing? And it told me, no, you're fine. Just try upgrading it. It'll let you do it. It'll run fine. And then I did, and it was fine. But I lost, like, a whole day trying to fix my UFEI errata B or whatever. It's There's a 2 in there. It's like UFEI 2.0 errata B. Yeah, yeah, um, okay. And you don't actually need it. You just need it for certain features. It's not a demand. But it was the error message was phrasing it like, oh, no, you have to have this. And I was like... The world is going to end. Like, Jesus, how do you even get there? I, it's a BIOS level thing, right? So I need to upgrade my BIOS. <laughs> how do you upgrade your BIOS in this day and age? <laughs> um, I believe you take the floppy disk. Yeah, so you take the floppy disk, and you put it in the drive, and then you turn the computer off, you turn it back on, and you hold F8... And then it, the BIOS. Well, it, it, it depends on the. It depends on the, the mine, OEM. I think, I think so, mine was F8. I think my BIOS specifically so was F8. I go through this hell because I have three different. So I have also have three desktops. I have a Dell. I have an HP, and I have a Falcon Northwest with an ASUS motherboard. Yeah, well, that thing's killer. Yeah, it'll eat the other two for breakfast. Um, the HP is currently what's running this uh, this podcast. Yeah, but on beta software. On Windows 10, yes. And, and um, Internet Explorer nearly crashed. That was fun. Um, as long as Windows Explorer doesn't nearly crash. That has happened in no, the that happens the all the time. Before. I watched, I follow Paul Thorat's Twitter. He had to take Windows 10 preview off because it was crashing too often. And he's doing what you do. He put it on his production machine, too. <laughs> Um, no, the production machine is still Windows 8. Is Windows 8. Um, Lightroom doesn't run on this machine. Anyways, the point is that I don't know which button goes with which machine. Um, so whenever the machine restarts, I hit all three of them. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> just hoping that, you know. But it was so... This was just one of those reminders of... Like, I have a skill set to do this, right? I do. I have I built my first PC when I was 10, right? I was managing my home network at age 12, okay? Like, I have a skill set crafted over decades to be able, almost two decades, to be and able to do And shreds of computer parts. And just, you know, just closets full of them in two different states, right? Like, I... Like, I am the kind of person that can handle this. But you realize why we all switched to laptops and iPads. Because you don't have to worry about UFEI errata B <laughs> on an iPad. And for most people, they're not really upgrading their laptop. So it just is kind of this thing, and then it dies. Excuse me. And then I buy the next thing. And while that's relatively wasteful... It makes a lot of sense. Right. It's a lot easier. And so it, it, it's all well and good to, like, bemoan the death of the desktop, right? And it's not going to die. It's just going to become, like, a pickup truck or a forklift. You need it for a very specific purpose. Well, it already is. Yeah, it, very much so, except my next part of the story. Um, but you, I, I get why they died, or I get why they stopped being mainstream. Because the work of running and managing them is a pain in my ever-loving ass. It's just, you know, I lost a day of work to something that didn't matter. But how on earth, how on earth, reading that error message was I supposed to know it didn't matter? Because my default was, I know what UFEI is, I don't know what Errata B is, but let's assume it's, I need to upgrade my BIOS firmware. <laughs> and so I did that, and then it still didn't work. 
And then finally I got hacked off and was like, does this even matter? And it didn't. Um, but something well, that- But the other thing is that, like, at least in that situation with a desktop, I, I feel confident enough in my abilities with a desktop, a.k.a. I can physically disconnect the hard drive that has all of the data on it um, and nuke everything. Mm-hmm. And I have the confidence in myself and in the hardware that I can rebuild it. However, with the laptop, so the yoga is due for me to like nuke it because it's just there. It's, 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 I've, I try to do it once a year. I've had it for two. It's, it needs its oil change. Mm, sure. Um, but I'm afraid that I'm going to, I'm going to get, I'm going to reach that point of no return and then everything is just going to go to hell in a handbasket. I'm a little afraid of that. Yeah, but I mean, just create a recovery. Di- just honestly, in Windows just build, 8, build the a Ocho, full recovery. Just make a f- create a full recovery flash drive. That's all you get. I do yeah. have a 64 gig flash drive. I could probably build a full recovery. Yeah, it's not that many gigs. Um, it's really not. Windows 8's a fairly light, lightweight operating system in terms of its hard drive footprint. Just create a full recovery flash drive. And make sure the data you want's off of it, and then nuke the thing. And that kind of stuff. That's not. See, that's a, with laptops. I don't know what it is, but I just have this mental block. I. And that's after like I routinely nuked and rebuilt the Dell Latitude, but I think it's because it was a business PC, and I thought of it differently. By the way, the hard drive from that machine still works. I bought it in two thousand and seven. I took a knife to my MacBook Pro to make it start going again. <laughs> probably told this story on the show before but i got to the point where i needed to finish this documentary and i jammed the mouse and i then tried to explain to apple why it was their fault that the glass on the trackpad was broken and they didn't buy my argument oddly (laughs) they Um, didn't see it your way they didn't see it my way it was their fault that it got jammed it's not my fault that I couldn't take it to Big Manzana, which is, by the way, the, na- <laughs> the name of the Apple authorized, only Apple authorized reseller in Paraguay. Mm. It's called Big Manzana, which for those who don't speak Spanish, it's not like Grande Manzana, which would be Big Apple, all in Spanish. It is Big in English and Manzana, Apple in, in Spanish. Spanish. It's actually pretty good. It's also a Sennheiser authorized reseller. Ooh, okay. Um, so you can go. It was not like, Beats? No, not Beats. It's actually kind of like my favorite place to go in Paraguay. Hey, someone else had their RAM get cooked. Um, it turns out you, we went to three different computer stores all across Paraguay, could, all across Asuncion, which is the only, that and Ciudad de Este are the only two cities that are going to have these kind of things. And we couldn't find the RAM she needs, so finally we found Big Manzana. <laughs> And they just took it in the back and fixed it like an Apple store. <laughs> and they're like, oh. And she was trying to get them to honor her warranty. And I was like, look, sister, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. We found big Manzana. Just pay the Manzana. <laughs> <laughs> just pay the Manzana. You're lucky this thing ex- There's no reason why this thing should exist. It's for all of the crazy Americans. Yeah, and the, you know, ex- it's the expat community. The, and the, well, you know, exactly. The elite of Paraguay. And, you know. I, there's a real mall in Asuncion too, with a make your own pasta place and Ooh. Yeah, I mean, there's like a really nice couple I can of get really behind nice, make your own pasta. So the truth behind, you know, all of the capitals I've ever been to in the developing world is the truth is the capitals are fine. It's the not the capital that's a little dodgier, right? You, right. you, you did get dysentery from I did get meat dysentery, place. But that was my fault. To you ate fair, lion. <laughs> no, I just that's I did eat lion, but that's not why I got dysentery. Um, I ate weird animals at the one of the top fifty restaurants in the world, Carnivore, um, in Nairobi. I got dysentery because I ate rare beef <laughs> in <laughs> Katui County, Kenya. <laughs> Lo and behold, <laughs> this tore up. This is really pleasant podcast conversation. It <laughs> really tore up my GI tract. <laughs> As it turns out. <laughs> so really, having your ram die in Asuncion is the least of your problems. Because then you just go to Big Manzana. This is, I'm, I'm like an ad for Big Manzana. If you are in Asuncion, Paraguay, I recommend Big Manzana. Um, they're a great Apple reseller. I, I, th- I think that the, the podcast title just needs to be, just go to Big Manzana. Just go to Big Manzana. Um, it, you know, it's a heck of a place. Um, 
so my other kind of transitioning off of the developing world, my other kind of complaint is that some of the desktops PCs being sold are absolute dreck. So last year, so how do you mean? So last year, I ran into a huge emergency, and I had to buy a PC. Um, and so I went. These, these to, things uh, happen in your these, life. These happen in my life. I had to buy a PC. I needed a fresh, clean desktop PC that was not mission critical. That if it exploded, it didn't matter. I needed this, and so I did. I went to Office Depot, and I found the cheapest HP desktop that I could literally buy, and I <laughs> bought that. It's like this three hundred thirty dollar piece of junk. Okay, it's you know runs full Windows eight. It's perfectly fine if all you want to do is make office documents and surf the internet, right? It's perfectly fine for that. It's the netbook of desktops, but it's in a full size mini ATX normal sized case. Mm -hmm. um, and so the small tower, small tower. Yeah. It's a small tower, it, you know, perfectly normal USB ports in the front disk drive that CD ROM drive that I stole out of DVD drive that I stole out of it. Um, perfectly decent, normal PC. Um, except, so I want to give it away. Um, I don't need it anymore. I now have a backup PC to replace it. Um, that's what I was working on previously with my UFEI Errata B problems. Um, and so I wanted, I want to give it away to a family that needs a computer. Um, I, it's a decent enough PC, and I'm going to include a old co my old copy of uh, 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 CS3, Adobe CS3. So this kid, whoever gets this, will have like a real licensed copy of Photoshop and InDesign and Illustrator. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get a copy of Office 2003. These are just software I have laying around that I don't need. So I'm going to install all this software on there. I'm going to give it away. And I was like, oh, I have an extra PCI wireless card, so I can give it wireless internet. Great. I'll just drop that in there. I don't need this card anymore, so I'll just drop it in there. So I take the case off, and I look at the motherboard. And I look at the motherboard. There are no PCI expansion slots. So I, I don't... I'm, uh, there are no PCI no, expansion there are slots? There are none. Not even like a nice one for a graphics card. There just isn't one. And I was... What is... What is this? It's a. So it turns out it's a... It's an what is it an ITX motherboard the really small ones right right in a full size desktop case the ITX is the one that's for like a media center PC media center PC or your frag uh, yeah or it's also the net top um, yeah it's all it, yeah it's all that that's kind of what it's built yeah, for it's real tiny it's a the board's only like that big right a tiny little board in this full size <laughs> mini tower. With no expansion slot. I think it has an extra SATA slot. An extra SATA where I can slot in a SATA cord. So I could add an extra hard drive. But you can't add a graphics card. You can't add a sound card. Because who would? You I, can't add cards. You can't add cards. Is this, like, God. what is the point of desktops? I get that, like, I grew up in the 80s and 90s where that was just what you did and you had to like balance how many cards you crammed in that do you need a physics engine card you remember these physics cards yes you need a physics card and a sound card and a graphics card and a network card look man i have a sound card in this machine yeah you should why not own it. Man, no not this machine that, that the yeah that one yeah sure yeah, absolutely. I just used audio interfaces, and uh, I have a sound board. Literally, <laughs> yeah. This computer doesn't need a sound card. Yeah. It has two USB audio interfaces and a sound board routed out through monitor speakers. Like this is not. I don't. Yeah, need yeah, one. yeah. No, you, you're, you're good. You're fine. At this point in history, I just don't need it, or I would have it. Um, what is like? See, that totally removes like for me the point of like like a big desktop machine and um and we, we talked about this a little bit before the show but i i think that the the biggest thing that's replacing that now is you, you see hp moving to things like the stream sure. series of of well, laptops those are, and, and those are great lap uh, laptops and tablets and the chromebook or the chrome box type of uh pc kind of form factor and and so i think you look at things like that and it's is the PC market being a little bit more honest about what they've been doing for a long time, which is basically saying on the cheap end, we're not going to give you any expandability. We're going to give you some USB ports, some 
you know, an SD card slot and a disk drive. And now all they're saying is, ah, well, you don't need a disk drive anymore. Fine. We can run this off a laptop motherboard uh, with a laptop processor. Call it a day. Yeah. Sure. And then with cheap flash storage and, you know. But you just end up in this place where you have this mini tower that purports to be one thing. And it would have been that 15 years ago. And now it's just this, I mean, it's just empty. On, it's literally empty on the inside. Well, There's and the, nothing and the, in there. And the problem is with, um, I think some of it is just the problems with um, desktop manufacturers and mm-hmm. the fact that, I don't, I don't know, like a lot of them, they, they make these card or these uh, motherboards for so many different applications, they they just start saying, "How can we not trim our product offerings and still and and make less pieces?" Well, and and also, I think that that's th- how you get no to this point. There's no money to be made. There's no money to be made in these things. They're they're commodity devices with very low margins, right? This is so. What- if you can save. 50 cents by putting a smaller motherboard in you're going to save 50 cents by putting a smaller right. motherboard and that's in. how you end up with superfish on the lenovo's right can they make 30 cents a laptop and when you're the world's largest pc manufacturer that makes a difference when you're hp and you're now the second largest pc manufacturer that makes a difference it's why to me i buy products with higher margins because the people care about those products more yeah i'm paying more Mm -hmm. absolutely but i'm also getting what i pay for right that dell that hp thing i bought i'm not sure it's worth 300 dollars. i'm not sure it's worth the price i paid um the macbook pro i used for four years um the only thing that i see um that's that's kind of a, a trend currently in the market um and and this is you, you see this in some of the more recent um, low end Windows tablets, mm-hmm. um, and uh, the Windows phones that were just announced this week at uh, Mobile World Congress, is the the bundling of things like Office three sixty five as a service for two years or a year or however long, and so you have a cheap device. Yeah, like seventy eighty dollars. Right. You 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 have a. Um, I, I want to say that. The the Lumia six forty is which was announced this week is um hundred and hundred and fifty bucks or something off contract. That's the price you pay. But Microsoft, because their software is actually their margins and, and is actually where they can differentiate, they're including that, hoping that you'll say, you know, this is great. I'd I'd like to keep this and just start paying seventy dollars a year for it. And then hopefully over the lifetime of the device, they'll make more money off of you. But it prevents things like other crapware from getting rolled into it. And I, and I think that that's, there's something valuable to be said for the, the fact that the PC manufacturers are focusing more on actual services that we actually – like I will take Office 365 personal for a year for free, happily. So you want an HP Stream 7 tablet? How much yeah, do you think you, that would cost you? The Stream 7? Yeah. It's cheap. 100 bucks. I was like, it's it's real cheap. With, the laptop is 200. Yeah, so um, the tab the Stream 7 laptop is 100 bucks for tablet. A tablet. 100 bucks with a year of Office 365. Right. Included. That's and there you, I think you're getting a hundred dollars worth of stuff. You're definitely getting a hundred dollars worth of stuff. And you can. You're probably to, even without the Office 365. You're probably still getting a hundred dollars worth of stuff. Sure. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. But it makes it so that you know, in a in a market that you look at that hundred dollar, hundred to hundred and fifty dollar tablet market, it's just like such commodity. There's well, so anything, many it, it, crappy yes. tablets yes. that are in that price point. And so I think that I'd rather see them because you, you can't expand tablets like the tablets they are what they are. But like you even look at the little the little box. You can't expand that. Not really. But that's fine. As long as you're being honest about what this thing is. Right. I'm not OK. I'm not, I'm not OK 
with pitching it as one thing and delivering another thing. I'm okay with the HP Stream 11 notebook being $200. Because it's all it's going to be is a $200 laptop, and a decent one at that. But I, and I, I do think that you see with the, the Stream series, HP is definitely taking a different approach with it. Um, now, I know that Lenovo still makes those small computers, uh, but I think Lenovo is more aggressive about using smaller cases sure. on the cheap computers. Uh, so they're more like net tops. Lenovo has one that's like 180 bucks. I want to say. That's a net top. Um, yeah. Dell has one. Acer has one. Asus has one. But they're all tiny. Like they, they all are more appropriate to the size that you would expect for a board that small. They don't look like real towers. Right. I think for me the issue is is it is the it's in the real tower format. So speaking of cheap and cheerful, what's been going on with you? Okay, so I, I think I mentioned this on the show, but I haven't talked at length. Um so I, I threw my Nexus five on the ground because I'm not a part of this system. It's not a part of the system. Um my dad is not actually a phone. So I replaced it, and by replaced it I mean just powered back up. Um the the Moto G, or as we lovingly refer to it, the Moto oh, He, uh, which was the phone that I purchased uh, while we were uh, traveling in Spain last summer. Um, so I did actually have to tell it that I didn't want it to use Google.es anymore, <laughs> um, which was which was really funny. Uh, but now it functions as a, a full American um, Moto G. And uh, just a refresher on the phone. Um, I mean, it's a it's a a four four point three inch screen. If I remember correctly, um, you have a, a five megapixel camera on the back, single flash, eight gigs of internal storage, no um, additional micro SD card, um, no removable battery. Really, the story here is cheap phone with a great screen, and it does have a great screen. Um, you can kind of see, I think I've got it angled just right. You, you can kind of see that it's a... Um, it's it's a pretty bright and and fairly clear and crisp screen um, with pretty decent viewing angles. Um, I mean, it, it's kind of running that that LCD screen tech that you'll find on the the Moto X. So it, it's not as high of a resolution, but that's to be expected. Um, and uh, I changed the background on it actually to reflect uh, that's a uh, from Spain uh, to reflect its birthplace. But so the the. What I've found in my my kind of three weeks at this point with the uh, with the Moto He is a lot of people would be very happy with this phone. They don't they don't need anything more than this phone. So this phone is hundred and eighty dollars off contract. Not bad. Um, and this and th- so this was the previous generation. They've actually replaced it. Um, they added an LTE version. This is not the LTE version. This is the um, no LTE version. Uh, to get the LTE, LTE, I want to say it was like an additional fifty bucks or something. But still, you're you're in that just over two hundred dollar range. You're in a pretty good range for um, for what you're getting out of the phone. You're getting most a lot of value for that. Um, but it's just got that kind of it, – it, it feels really nice in the hand. Um, it's got a, a nice heft to it, a re- very reassuring heft. Um, I, I do really like the the Moto Batwing M um, kind of finger divot for you uh, to put your finger on. That's something that they added with the, uh, the Moto X that they, they carry through with the rest of the line to the Moto G and the Moto um, E. Moto E, not the Moto He. Um, and so I, it was, I've been using it for for about three or four weeks now. And my overall impression of it is it's a great phone. And a lot of people would be happy with it. My biggest complaint with it is that it does not have any kind of expandable memory, which is something I think they added with the newest version. So at 8 gigs, I can't keep any images on it. I can't keep any cached music on Google Music on it. Um, and I, I have to very carefully monitor the apps that I have installed, the uh, the podcasts I have downloaded, and the audiobooks I have downloaded. And I guess the biggest problem is that I'm coming from a 32 gig Nexus 5 mm-hmm. to an 8 gig Moto G. And it, if I had maybe a 16 gig Nexus 5, it wouldn't have been as bad. 
but it's that huge drop yeah. down that makes it so hard. And so I, I think that that's the we see, we've seen a lot of kind of the the mid range and low range phones. Um, I mean, just the other week we had the Moto E that came out. Um, I, they released a new one for 150 bucks with LTE. Uh, not quite as good of a screen, but basically it is a very similar phone to this phone from a year ago. Uh, very similar specs. Um, I mean, so there is a little bit of sl- slowness in some of the games that I play, but it's only when you're opening it, and after that it w- runs fine. In general, it, it does it does perfectly acceptably at far, as far as speed. The camera is exactly that. It is acceptable. It is not... Um, it's not a good camera. It is an acceptable camera. Um, it is a, a camera. It is a camera. If you need to take a picture of a thing, you can use it, but don't expect anything like good. Um, don't expect anything. Yeah, just really don't expect anything. But I, I guess the real point is that there's a lot of value in that kind of um two hundred dollar, two to three hundred dollar range. On um, apparently my laptop just turned on. <laughs> my team viewer just popped up and told me that my laptop had locked on. That's terrifying. Um, but the uh, especially with Mobile World Congress this week, I, I am looking to get a new phone. the The one that is currently sticking out to me is the the Galaxy S six Edge. Yep. Um, yep, that's the phone. That's the, the, the phone. Two th- so the two things I'm waiting on are I want. Um, finalized uh, camera and battery tests on both the um, the one M9 mm-hmm. and the uh, both of the S6 variants, and uh, I want to know because Samsung reduced the battery size in the new S6 and increased the screen resolution. Uh-huh. So unless and they they changed to an Exynos processor from the uh, Qualcomm claiming the Qualcomm had battery issues. Yeah, claiming that they can save power by switching to their own processor. Really, they can save margins by switching to their own processor. But um, so so just kind of seeing how that landscape looks. But really, the if I'm going to go for a high end phone at this point, that's what I'm going to go for. But you can step down to a Moto X. A new Moto X from yep. last year for four hundred dollars. They 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 run sales. Oh, and that's off contract. Yeah, yeah, that's that's unlocked off contract, and you're not going to be able to get a S six for less than probably six fifty, off contract. Um, off contract is really the only intelligent way to talk about these things because it, it compares their actual value right. as opposed to what people pay for them. Right, because I paid four hundred and forty dollars for my i my sixty four gigabyte iPhone six plus. Right. So this is not a four hundred fifty dollar phone. This is no. like a seven hundred dollar like nine hundred dollar phone. phone. It's ridiculous what this phone is actually the value. I, I want to say it bases at like seven fifty. Right. I mean, it's crazy. Uh-huh. It, it's absolutely nuts. I think some of this speaks to why only Apple, why Apple is able to command so much of the profits, because for the most part, phones, I phones are becoming a commodity like the desktop market, where it's you don't need the latest and greatest to get by with what you want to do. It's the same problem the tablet market faces as well. That innovation is just, it's now just becoming incremental increases rather than massive leaps forward. And that's, in a way, that's great. Because that means we've hit a stable point in the market where we can start to innovate off of that. So that's why you see smartwatches being a thing and glass holes becoming a thing. Because we're now... We have a fixed platform of what smartphones are, and we can start to think, what else can we do around mobile tech? Right, right. and you start looking at, um, I mean, the, so the thing that I'm obviously the most disappointed in is I, I want a new, the thing I want really is a new Lumia phone. Sure, um, me too. Because I think that if Microsoft can take what, Nokia did with the Lumia Icon or the Lumia 930, which was announced a year ago and released a year ago, and even just incrementally improve it, even just give it a a facelift. I think that they would have, and then and then give it some real marketing push. 
I think that they could they could make a killing on on that phone. Sure. Because if they can get the battery life out of it, which Windows eight it's consistently um, shown Windows, Windows 10, ten has consistently shown it can. It's a um, lighter weight operating system than Android. Yeah, Android is is very heavy. And so and they've got the camera tech and they've got Everything I've seen from Lumia Photos, they have a certain look to them, and I, and I will say that that the the processing that's going on in the background is, is definitely is definitely distinct, but it produces stunning images um, that that are able to avoid an oversaturation problem that I, I've often associated with Samsung cameras. Um, but I, I think that you you just look at everything else that's going on in the market that you got all these other Chinese manufacturers Xiaomi leading the charge on that. Um, and ZTE and Huawei and Huawei, Huawei, Huawei. And, um, well, I, was it Huawei that, um, announced a new watch this week? I mean, like an Android wear watch that actually looks really nice. I mean, You've got these a bunch of Chinese manufacturers that are really making a strong push. And you got Microsoft and Motorola that are duking it out in the middle and low end, um, and Microsoft is able to show growth in yeah. the low end. Mm -hmm. And and Motorola Although in a I lot think of ways they need a flagship in order to really get anything back. They do, and I and I think that that's what Motorola has done well. They had they still have the flagship, and their flagship is slightly less expensive than everyone else's. But it but, has that kind of customizability, and it, right, it's got some its, cool things with the Moto. It's got its shtick. Oh, by the way, did, I, did you find out? Did you hear that uh, they closed the uh, Fort Worth plant? Yeah, I did. I'm, I missed that. It's disappointing. Uh, I had to look it up on my brother. My brother had to order a new Moto X, and uh, he said, "Yeah, they, sh you know, it shipped from China very quickly." I went from China. It should be shipping from Fort Worth. So I googled and they, found they that had to close it. The second that they sold it to um, Lenovo, right. Lenovo closed the plant. Right, they would. Because it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't make any sense for them to keep one plant in the United States. Especially uh, when, all, when you're, yeah, when you have all of those access to all those Chinese manufacturing facilities. Which, yeah, they already do. Um, so I, I think that I would look towards the Christmas season. I think that that's when you'll really see the the mid range phones be what last year's top end phones were sure. and guess what the difference between last year's hero phones and this and this year's hero phones is not that big no i, I think the really the really big thing for me this will be an incremental year on the iphone um but samsung i think really launched and we'll talk about this more on thursday but really launched a strong volley with the galaxy s6 and specifically the galaxy s6 edge um, so with that teaser, we should probably get out of here. Thank you so much for joining us on T4. If you have any feedback for us, podcast, textlesscall.com, facebook.com slash textlesscall, pinterest.com slash textlesscall, or at textlesscall on the Twitters. Good night. Good night.